I was completely burnt out. I gained 40 pounds and I was miserable and depressed. And it was epiphany for you to say, hey, this is it. Yeah, but on my own terms this time, yeah. I mean, there's always a choice, right? And anytime you lead into the unknown, like lean in, it's just gonna happen. It unfolds. You just gotta lead with courage. Hey everybody, welcome back to Ignition Point, the channel for entrepreneurs. I'm Debbie Hart. Sean Finnegan. Today we have Don Haley. His main business is trading algorithms, but he is a multifaceted entrepreneur like many of us. He's in finance, he has an elite mastermind group. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about what you do and how you got started? Yeah, well thank you everyone for having me on the show. Uh, it's really exciting to come out here at Utah. Uh, so my primary business, as I mentioned, uh, trading algorithms. So we specialize in helping everyday investors put their portfolio on autopilot. Well, nearly autopilot, we say. So uh, we really identified a problem in the space where good returns and good portfolio growth is really hard to find, uh, especially in traditional markets. So we help accelerate that uh, by putting automation in their trading por portfolio and uh, yeah, we see really excellent gains and it's been a really exciting journey, so. That's exciting now, yeah. but when you grew up, did you dream of doing finance and uh, business? You're so a CPA did... too, right? Yeah, CEO. Yeah, so how did you come to this in your life? Yeah, so my career, I mean, humble beginnings. My dad was a cook, my mom was a bartender, and they were separated since I was in a Vegas. baby. Uh, so I went to school, you know, paid my way through community college, got grants to go to University of South Florida. I was like a prep cook and a dishwasher then. Uh, from there, I had met a mentor while I was bartending, while bar backing. Uh, he was a VP at uh, Morgan Stanley, and he's like, you need to go to finance, uh, specifically accounting at the USF, University of South Florida, because they were a top 50 accounting school. I'm like, sure, I'll do accounting. I don't, you know, if it's the best opportunity that I have at hand, I'll take it on, right? Meanwhile, I was like a social guy. I was like the social chair of my fraternity, and I was still like getting like really high grades at USF, and I got recruited by Ernst & Young. So while I was working at Ernst & Young, this is when I really de determined that I hate corporate America, right? Because it was really tough for me. Bureaucracy, yeah. red tape. Yeah, ton of red tape. I mean, you're sitting in, uh, imagine this, right? You're in an auto room, there's six people around, they're eating, they're typing all day long, and that's all you do for 16 hours a day, six days a week, and you're working on half days on Sundays, right? So your whole life is just like this hamster wheel of uh, you know, work, you know what I mean? It never ends. So after two years, burned out, did like six busy seasons in a row, which a busy season is uh, a 10K filing uh, for a public company, right? So we did, I got put on six uh, in a row in two years. T typically people do one or two a year and they burn out from that. So I was completely burnt out. I gained 40 pounds and I was miserable and depressed. And I How left- How many hours are we talking about a week? Minimum 80, yeah. 80 hours a week. Yeah, I would say, yeah. Jeez. Yeah, it was intense. Hard to have a life. Yeah, no, well, there wasn't a life. It was Ernst and Young, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know a lot of people had similar stories in public accounting, right? So I ended up leaving there and decided, uh, well, I had an event company. Remember I mentioned I was in like social chair. I had an event company. We're throwing par uh, parties for college kids. And we had never lost money on an event. We did 57 events in a row and always made money. And I didn't I was, know college kids didn't like to party. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And uh, so I ended up leaving, I don't tell the story much, but I ended up leaving Ernst Young, went all in on the party company with my business partner then. Cause like, oh, this is, you know, we're crushing this. Yeah. We're crushing this without yeah. even trying. Let's see what happens when we go all and in. You're like, hey, I'm spending 80 hours a week on this hamster reel. Yeah. And this looks a lot funner. I'm gonna start partying for, for a living. Right, <laughs> yeah. Ended up going all in and I was like, okay, this could be, uh, you know, my first entrepreneurial journey. And we're doing all the things, going to events. Anyways, well, we went all in. That took away our exclusivity because we went from one event a month to four events a week. And it burned out our reputation. It burned out, you know, we're spending money on the events. So we didn't know how to run a business, right? So that ended up being my first failure in business. And I went to, and I got a $50,000 of credit card debt. I just bought a house when I left Ernst & Young and it was being renovated. Contractor walked out on me. The whole house was half gutted, put a lien on the house. So I have no income. 50 grand in debt. 50 grand in debt and I had a lien on my house. And my buddy calls me up one day. He's like, hey, man, I'm going to Tony Robbins in L.A. And uh, do you want to go? I'm like, oh, what's another 2K on the credit card, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I went, um, transformed my life, uh, you know, reframed my CPA license because that was my like superpower. There's whatever, 500,000 CPAs in the U.S. And I built a CFO services firm for HR entrepreneurs and um, private equity. So I built that company to six figures in six months, refinanced my house with, with one of my uh, clients. He put his contractors on my house, fixed up my house, refinanced, got out of debt. And then that was my first like big 
big win in entrepreneurship, right? How, let's go back to how did that change? What specifically happened where you went to the Tony event and how did that change happen? Yeah, so there's an exercise he does. I mean, he does a lot of exercises, but uh, there's an exercise he does where you talk about like your superpowers and like what your leverage is like in business, right? Um, and I just got to download that my CPA is my most powerful resource, right? At the, at the time. Now, obviously, I have better resources, but um, at the time, I was like, okay, this is a power play. I can, because I know a lot of entrepreneurs that need support and finance. I mean, you're in this space, right? So it's like um, a lot of entrepreneurs need this help, right? So, yeah, it was just a download I got while at the event. And it was epiphany for you to say, hey, this is it. I'm going to go down, back down this path of the CPA path. Yeah, but on my own terms this time, yeah. How did you pull yourself out of it? I mean, you're still in debt, you're still lean on your house. I mean, what was the day-to-day -day looking like for you? I mean, I just showed up, right? So um, anytime you have an opportunity, my first client, I showed up every day. I was at the office just really learning his business. He did like the Burr method, if you're familiar with real mm -hmm. estate. Yeah. So we would you know, acquire property, fix, flip it, refi, right? Into bigger blanket loans and I would handle that CFO side of things. So I'd be part of that whole like acquisition, getting the numbers, getting them. Uh, dialed in and yeah, it was a pretty cool experience got to learn a lot about real estate and then from there I picked up a private equity guy like um, they do a lot of business together he does like uh, hard money loans for real estate so I picked him up now I doubled up my income and then I was picking up other clients through um, you know tax prep and all that stuff but you just showed up That's yeah what you did yeah exactly so like, I'm gonna go to work yeah this one I pulled out the Ernst & Young and just went hard <laughs> I had to figure it out you know what I mean? look, look what came from it it did it totally yeah. changed your life yeah it did yeah I mean you could have easily just thrown in the towel and said hey I've already got to lean on this place I'm in debt right. yeah. I, I just got I'm gonna walk away yeah right yeah I mean there's always a choice right anytime you pick it you have a, there's two roads you can take you can choose hey listen like I'm gonna just fail right I'm gonna go back to the nine to five I could have easily called up a lot of the big four or um, a lot of private companies because they want to hire seniors. They want to have people that have experience, right? But I was like, no, this is the journey. This is the life I want to be on, you know, especially after going to the Tony event. I was like, this is where I want to go, right? If I hadn't done the Tony event, maybe I would have went back to, you know, corporate America. So it's a temptation for every entrepreneur because yeah. generally you leave, leave some kind of W-2 yeah. and you make that leap of faith. And then it's always like this is security over here with benefits. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. right. It's all the, mm -hmm. all, the, all the matrix pay, stuff. Yeah, all the things. <laughs> I remember my wife telling me at the time when we started a business, like, hey, you know, you know, Bob down the street, he has benefits and he makes a salary. And have you ever considered that? You know, it's like, it's like it's tempting because you have no security when you make that leap. It's scary. Zero. Yeah. And it's like certain times like that, you're just like, hey, I'm going to go so deep focus on this thing. Yeah. It's just having faith, too. Right. I didn't know that was the result. I didn't know that would be the outcome. I just knew this is where I was leading into. Mm -hmm. I mean, anytime you lead into the unknown, like lean in, it's just going to happen. It unfolds. You just got to lead with courage. You know? Yeah. How did you meet your wife? At what point? Oh, uh, yeah. So that transitions to the next business. So while I was doing the CFO services, uh, I met a guy named Nick Santanastasso. Uh, so my business partner in the event company that failed was my roommate. So Ramir, his name is, he came in and started, started yep. managing Nick. Yep. And I was running their CFO stuff, right? I was, you know, started their entity, did all the stuff on the, you know, just hooking them up. And then when they got to a position where they needed more support, I went on the road with them. So I ended up dissolving. I still had the accounting company, but like I ended up dissolving that company to become a, a you know, third partner in that business and went all in on building Nick's brand from, I don't know, 20, I think 2017 or 2018, something like that. Tell, tell us, so for the people who don't know who Nick is, tell us about Nick. Yeah, so Nick's a motivational speaker, um, one of the biggest in the world. He was, we got him on stage with Tony Robbins uh, all over I mean, all over the world, China tours, uh, very motivational. He's born with no legs and one arm. Uh, probably one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful speakers in the world um, with the story. So what do you learn most from him? Ooh, that's a good question. What I learned most, I mean, just being around like somebody that had, you know, he was born with a challenge, right? I never saw him with like, cause he was a brother, right? So it's like, I didn't see, he never acted like he had any challenges or anything different than us, right? So it was just like, we'd be traveling all the world. I'd be carrying him up steps. I'd be carrying him, you know, cause China doesn't really have Facilities, facilities, yeah. For, so we're yeah. carrying them up places. We're right. walking, you know, pushing wheelchairs through jungles. Or, you know, just like whatever ideas we would come up with, he would show up and do it. He wouldn't. Out, he wouldn't operate from fear, right? So his whole thing is, you know, um, you know, victim to victor, right? So not don't be a victim of your life. Become a victor of your life. If you haven't watched Nick, you got to follow him and check out his journey. It is powerful. Yeah, he's incredible for sure. Yeah.
Now pivot into how did that turn into? Oh, that was. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so while I was managing Nick, um, there was a, an event in Tampa and they wanted you know Nick to speak. So we said, hey, just buy our books and because uh, we launched a book at the time and we'll get you to speak and you know, Nick will speak. Uh, so they bought the books, gave them out to the audience and that's where I met her. She was dating somebody else at the time. We became friends. Um, and then about a year and a half later, um, I was taken, I don't know, do you know Rob Dial? Do you know Rob? I don't think so. Rob Dial, he has like a business breakthrough program mm -hmm. anyway. So I was taking that program to become a coach. So in that process, it talks about offering some free value, get, giving free coaching, right? Mm -hmm. So I post one of my stories, hey, I'll do some free coaching. You know, a lot of people see me with Tony Robbins. I've been to countless seminars. I have a lot of, you know, things that I've learned, NLP, all this stuff. And I offered, um, you know, offered some coaching sessions. Well, a bunch of people replied and like she wrote like, probably 10 paragraphs of like why she should be my like client. And um, so she ended up, you know, getting chosen out of, you know, pick three people. And she was amazing. She showed up every week after the first month, she started paying. So I was like, okay, this girl's investing into her growth mindset. Um, it was always professional. I never hit on her once. And I think that actually was, you know, cause I was leading with love. I think that actually created a dynamic a of bond, trust and a solidify bond. the like, relationship. That wasn't my intention, yeah. right? I didn't even yeah. think I would date this girl, you know, at the time, but anytime you're coaching, you always have to have pure intent, right? Like even though she's a beautiful girl and like, I would not deter from that. Right. So, um, about six months later, she said, Hey, I want to come uh, to Vegas to visit. Um, I'm like, yeah, sure. Come out. She flew herself out. And then that first night a spark flew and I told her I loved her. Yeah. First night. First wow. night, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did she uh, accept that well? Or she did, she yeah. It yeah. Okay. She pretty much never left Vegas from there, yeah. Wow. Got married 10 months later. Oh, Dang. Okay. So I'll reverse a little bit. I forgot to leave this big chunk out. Uh, I know this is more of a business podcast, but uh, when I was at Tony Robbins' Day with Destiny, I wrote my relationship vision, which is interesting because the year before, I didn't even, there was a board. On the first, the, I thought I was going to be like a single Playboy guy forever, right? That first day with You're Destiny. You're a frat guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Frack guy is a better description, right? <laughs> um, that first board, I never put a relationship vision on. The next year I put a relationship vision on to the, I put a one year girl ideal relationship Dang. to the year of the week. She came and flew that. Oh, I just got goosebumps. She flew Aww. in Dang. that week and, she, and I showed her that night. I was like, you match everything on this board. Wow. And I didn't even like know it was her. She flew to me. You know? although, <laughs> although it is a business in business that, that can have, it applies to anything. What's your yeah. vision board for your business? Yeah. It's like, what's your law of attraction you want to bring back? What are you putting out there without yeah. expecting? I think the key thing is like, I, I didn't expect it. I didn't force it to be her, but like, she just came like God provided. You know what I mean? It wasn't like, Hey, this is the woman. She meets all my criteria. I'm going to get her. And it was like, I put it out there and I let it go. And then she came to me. Right. I think the same thing happens in business all the time too. Like anytime you're trying to force in business, anytime you're like, Hey, I need this, need this, need this, need this. It seems like it gets further and further, further away. Right. Yeah. It's kind Amen. of interesting. That's yeah. powerful. Yeah. Bring us home, Debbie. What so don't do the two of you run a business together. Yeah. So she helps on the marketing and social side of things. Um, you know, I focus on the CEO and then we have our, you know, developers, a team and stuff like that. Um, yeah, she helps uh, a lot on the social media. She has an agency and um, she has her own social media agency. Yeah, she helps clients nice. with social. And, yeah. Very cool. Well, she's like yeah. a power couple. Yeah, we'll have amazing. to have her back on then. Yeah, yeah, she'll come on. Yeah, she's cool. definitely a powerful partner for you. Oh, awesome. She's amazing. Yeah, yeah. 100 percent. Makes a big difference, huh? Yeah, having the right teammate. 100 percent. So where can everybody follow your journey and learn more about what you're offering? Yeah, um, Instagram is my best uh, platform right now at Don Haley, D-O-N-H-A-Y-L-E-Y. Is there some way to engage with the uh, trading service? Yeah. Some trading algorithm? Yeah. How, how, what's the best way to get involved in that piece? Uh, so the you? trading algorithms. Yeah. So one of the biggest things that I've learned and, you know, uh, very smart guy, Warren Buffett, he said, if you don't find a way to make money while you're sleeping, you'll work until you die. Mm. Right. So that was one of the biggest breakthroughs for me is like, how do I find the question I ask myself? Because questions dictate your future. Right. And questions dictate your reality. It's like, how do I find an opportunity or create a, an opportunity for people to make money while they sleep? And that's where the trading algorithms came into play. You know, I have a developer a partner that's been doing it for 15 years, tons of track record. And so in order for them to get involved, they just book a call with me or message message me and we'll uh, give them a free demo, show them how it all goes on, how we do it. And, you know, if it's a fit, sweet. Okay. Yeah. We'll include so, that link. Yeah, we will. And what's your parting advice for entrepreneurs out there? What would you say? Like, what's one thing that you would say that you'd want to leave people with? The unknown, right? So always, lean, especially, you know, entrepreneurship, you never really know which direction you're going to go. I mean, you have a idea, 
right? I didn't think I would be, you know, partnered with Nick Santanastasa when I was running a CFO services company that we do, you know, tours of Tony Robbins. That was never in my realm of reality. But what did I do? I leaned into the unknown. I went from a six figure business to working for free for a year, right? I didn't know that was my outcome, but I got to meet all these incredible people, got to build the person I am. So just always leaning in. I mean, Joe Dispenza talks about that a lot as well as the unknown and just having good intentions in your heart and just try to help people. And uh, that's gonna lead you down the right path. It is, it is that uh, classic scene in Indiana Jones when he's going over that bridge and you can't see the bridge and it's a, it's a leap of faith where he has to take a step out into the unknown, like you said, and see what happens. And for you, all those things came into your life. Always, yeah. Just amazing. Always just jump into the unknown and see what happens. Just don't be scared. <laughs> Great advice. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us yeah. today. Thank you, Thank you Don. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. If any of you watching today have any doubts that your current CPA is not helping you take 100% advantage of the deductions you deserve and helping you stay compliant with the IRS, then don't hesitate to get involved with TaxSide today. You won't be disappointed.